As I'm sure many of you are aware, Horizon Zero Dawn and Sony are currently facing some backlash because of the business model that they've implemented when it comes to upgrading from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. They recently put the game up for pre-order, announced its various editions, which include the physical versions, which are the standard editions and the special editions for PS4 and PS5. Standard editions are $60 and $70 respectively for PS4 and PS5. Special editions are $70 to $80 respectively. And these are the only editions that come with a physical disc. The rest are digital. So we've got the digital deluxe edition, which is $80. And then scrolling down, we've got the collector's edition, which is $200 and the regal edition, which is $260. Of all these editions, only the digital ones are the ones that allow you to participate in what's called dual entitlement, which is what gives you access to both PS4 and PS5 version. So the way they're going about it is they're locking the free upgrade behind a more expensive edition. Sony said for players looking to have access to both the PS4 and PS5 versions of Horizon Forbidden West, please purchase the digital deluxe collectors or regal editions. Dual entitlement does not apply to the standard and special editions. And what this did was break two past promises outlined in this paragraph right here. One, that cross-generation upgrades from PS4 to PS5 would be free. And two, that there'd be an upgrade path for both digital owners and physical owners. But both of those promises were broken in one fell swoop with this note and with this business model. Now, some people have tried to defend this by noting how this paragraph just say the PS4 digital versions of launch games include a free upgrade on both PS5 consoles. The justification being that Sony specifically said launch games and Horizon Forbidden West is technically not a launch game, so it falls outside the purview of this promise of a free upgrade from PS4 to PS5, but it's hard to deny that there is a lack of clarity here and it feels like you have to essentially read the fine print. Sony is mainly trying to come off here like they are offering free upgrades and never specifically say after launch games here is how we're charging for upgrades from PS4 to PS5. None of that is outlined here. They sprung that up all by surprise with Horizon Forbidden West and with the Ghost of Tsushima Direct cut business model that also drew some backlash. Not to mention that it doesn't say launch day games here, it says launch games, which could be referring to the launch window of PlayStation 5, which could be the launch quarter or the launch year. And Horizon Forbidden West is specifically spotlighted in the same paragraph where they spotlight free upgrades. Not to mention that outside of this blog post in a separate interview, Sony Interactive CEO Jim Ryan, when asked about the cross-generation games like Horizon Forbidden West or Spider-Man Miles Morales, he specifically said this, no one should be disappointed. The PlayStation 5 versions of those games are built from the ground up to take advantage of the PS5 feature set. And we have an upgrade path for PlayStation 4 users to get the PS5 versions for free. It's about people having choice. I'm really quite pleased about the situation. And by those games, he's specifically referring to any cross-generation game that's coming out on both PS4 and also with a PS5 version that's going to utilize the console's capabilities. He said those games will have a free upgrade path. There's no question about what he said. So there are a couple of layers to why the Horizon Forbidden West business model has proven controversial. It broke various promises. They're doing this during a time in gaming when free upgrades for cross-generation titles are being normalized. There's also the fact that they're locking the next-gen upgrade behind a more expensive edition during a time when PlayStation 5s are impossible to find. So even people who just want to get the $70 standard edition for PlayStation 5 if they buy that edition, they're not going to be able to access the PlayStation 4 version to play in the meantime while they wait for PS5s to come back to stock. Choices are limited with people being strong-armed into purchasing more expensive editions. And you stack all of that up against the competition, Xbox is smart delivery, and there's just no question Xbox is being far more consumer-friendly. And it doesn't help that the term dual entitlement that PlayStation is using is one that was, I believe, first used by EA when implementing this program for FIFA 22 and Madden 22, where you have to purchase the ultimate edition of those sports games, which are $100, 
to gain access to both the last gen and the current gen versions, strictly locking that feature behind these more expensive editions. And NBA 2K21 did the same thing with the Mamba edition, which essentially monetized Kobe Bryant's death. With Horizon Forbidden West, it's straight up the exact same program, except the floor is $80 instead of $100, but it's still not consumer friendly. And as you can imagine, the amount of backlash was pretty swift. Generally, for the most part, people agree that this is a scummy business model and that Sony and PlayStation should backpedal on this one. And fortunately, it would seem as though PlayStation has been listening to the discourse and have decided to backpedal and reverse their decision to lock the PS4 to PS5 upgrade behind specific more expensive editions. Here's a tweet that reads, an update regarding Horizon Forbidden West on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. And if we go back to that blog post showing all of the different editions, you'll find that it's been updated with a new quote from Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan that reads as follows. Thursday was to be a celebration of Horizon Forbidden West and the amazing team at Guerrilla working to deliver it on February 18th, 2022. However, it's abundantly clear that the offerings we confirmed in our pre-order kickoff missed the mark. I kind of hate it when companies say we missed the mark when they were intentionally going for something and it backfired because of the backlash, not because they accidentally implemented an anti-consumer business scheme. They didn't miss the mark. It's not like they were aiming for the bullseye and accidentally didn't hit it. They intentionally aimed outside the bullseye, hit their mark because that was more financially lucrative. But people noticed, wait, you didn't hit the bullseye that we wanted, the bullseye that you promised. They got called out, and so now they're retracting that arrow. They figured, let's intentionally hit that target outside the bullseye that wasn't what we promised and see if we can get away with it. And, well, obviously they didn't. The statement continues, last year we made a commitment to deliver free upgrades for our cross-gen launch titles, which included Horizon Forbidden West. They admit as much. While the pandemic's profound impact pushed Forbidden West outside of the launch window, which is how I interpreted it when I read launch games would be free to upgrade to PS5. While the pandemic's profound impact pushed Forbidden West out of the launch window we initially envisioned, we will stand by our offer. Players who purchase Horizon Forbidden West on PlayStation 4 will be able to upgrade to the PlayStation 5 version for free, so they've completely backtracked on their promise breaking. Now, I don't understand why whether a game launches within a console's launch window or outside of it should impact whether you implement a consumer-friendly cross-generation business model. With Xbox's smart delivery and the commitment of first-party titles that are cross-generation all taking advantage of it, it doesn't matter whether it launches within Xbox Series C's launch window or outside of that. That's a commitment that Xbox made. So with Sony and PlayStation, why is it that games past the launch window will be charging for a cross-generation upgrade? And it is indeed spotlighted right here that after Horizon Forbidden West, future first-party cross-generational launches will charge $10 for an upgrade. So Jim Ryan said, I also want to confirm today that moving forward, PlayStation first-party exclusive cross-gen titles, newly releasing on PS4 and PS5, both digital and physical, will offer a $10 uh, digital upgrade option from PS4 to PS5. This will apply to the next God of War and Gran Turismo 7 and any other exclusive cross-gen PS4 and PS5 title published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. So Jim Ryan is straight up saying Horizon Forbidden West will be the last time you'll get a free upgrade for any first party cross generation releases. Now on one hand it is definitely good that Sony is backtracking on their previous intentional attempt to break their past promise of giving a free upgrade from PS4 to PS5 and this is ultimately a good development that they listen to the feedback but on the other hand the fact that they attempted this at all is kind of disheartening. It is not good for optics. And I am not going to applaud them for deciding to not do something bad, just like I wouldn't applaud a robber for deciding that day that they're not going to rob a bank. Like I'm not going to celebrate somebody deciding not to do something bad. I'll celebrate them going out of their way to do something good. This scheme shouldn't have been attempted at all. It should have been obvious that it was wrong. It should have been obvious that this isn't the mark. And I certainly have to call out the fact that in their previous statements, they never hinted at a paid 
PS4 to PS5 cross-gen upgrade system. They say launch games will include free upgrades, but they never detail what's going to happen after the launch games. They never say, but keep in mind that after that, we are going to start charging $10. Like none of that is outlined in this blog post because they're trying to keep that on the down low intentionally to not draw backlash. And then in Jim Ryan's statement to the Washington Post, he never hints at launch games specifically being the only cross-generation titles that will have a free upgrade. He just says those games, as in the cross-generation games as a whole, will receive a free upgrade. And the way this quote was taken is that essentially PlayStation is doing exactly what Xbox is doing with smart delivery. So at best, they were incredibly vague about how they would deal with PS4 to PS5 upgrades for cross-generation titles that are past the launch window of games. And at worst, they straight up just lied about it and broke the promises that they made. So yes, while overall this is positive news and while it is good that Sony did listen to the feedback and backlash and reverse their position, it doesn't change the fact that they made the attempt to do something nefarious, to do something that they knew was wrong or should have known was wrong. And the fact that they're taking pot shots like these, testing the waters here and there in terms of what they can get away with with anti-consumer models just doesn't paint a good picture for you know what Sony might attempt next. Anytime someone goes out of their way to do something wrong, to try to get away with something that clearly isn't the right action to take, it breaks down trust. And that's kind of what Sony did. It, they broke some of that trust. It'll be harder to just take Sony's word for it with future PR statements. It'll be harder to believe that they won't break certain promises. And it'll be harder to doubt that they won't try something anti-consumer down the line, that they won't try to poke and prod with schemes like this again in the future. One can only hope that Sony and PlayStation learn from all this and that they won't try to implement dual entitlement with future cross-generation releases as that's a business model and scheme that people are not fond of. FIFA tried it and it got backlash. 2K tried it with NBA 2K. That got backlash. And just the very notion of Sony charging $70 for the PS5 version and $60 for the PS4 version for a cross-generation title is strong scrutiny as many feel as though cross-generation titles should be $60 as they're limited by the lowest common denominator hardware and should have a free upgrade and no additional cost while next-gen titles specifically made using the newer hardware that take full advantage of you know playstation 5 that stuff can maybe get away with a $70 base price as long as it's not monetized to hell and back with shitty microtransactions and loot boxes and as long as the quality and the scale and you know the things that hold it up to a high quality standard that justify its premium price. Like, don't get me wrong, I think I'd get way more out of paying $70 for Horizon Forbidden West or the new God of War than paying $5 for FIFA 22, but you're competing with Xbox a Smart Delivery, you're competing with a number of other publishers, developers, and studios who are giving out free upgrades. And with how much Sony rode this wave of free upgrades for cross-generation first-party titles from PS4 to PS5, this is just all around not a good look. And I guess I'll conclude this video by stating this is why it's important to speak out. Do so constructively. I'm not talking about death threats and all the horrible, toxic stuff, but there were plenty of people who told Sony this is wrong and it had an effect which is why it's better to call this stuff out before it has any chance to fester into something worse. And so I'm glad that this was the end result. I'm glad that PlayStation ultimately listened. But at the same time, my trust in Sony and PlayStation has certainly been diminished. And hopefully with future actions, they can start to win that back and make us believe that they won't try to pull something like this again. But that's just one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Sony backtracking on this dual entitlement business model for Horizon Forbidden West and actually giving PlayStation 4 players who purchase any edition a free upgrade to PlayStation 5 after backlash share your thoughts below and to be further updated on all things gaming news reviews and discussions stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out